What's up everybody, Chef Billy Parisi here and hold on tight because I'm making an amazing homemade French silk pie with a delicious homemade pie crust and we're doing this in partnership with Bob's Red Mill. If you've never had French silk pie, oh my gosh, have you been missing out. It is amazing and one of my favorite pies of all time. I know I say that with everything I make, but seriously, once you try this, you're gonna be like, dude, I've been missing out, this is crazy we first need to start by making that homemade pie crust. Go ahead and add some flour to a food processor. I'm gonna be using Bob's Red Mill all-purpose flour, which is a fantastic all-around flour. I always say that it has enough protein for those artisan breads and is delicate enough for cakes and of course pie crust. Next, we're going to add in some sea salt, followed up with a little bit of sweetness, some sugar, then add in some very cold, unsalted butter. We're gonna put the top on the food processor and what we wanna do is pulse it on high speed while slowly drizzling in some ice cold water. You're gonna do this for maybe 20 to 30 seconds. You'll notice that the dough becomes like a meal. The butter should be about the size of rice. So when you pick up the dough, you can pinch it and it easily comes together and forms together. We are finished with this now. Head over to a clean surface dusted with a little bit of flour. Add our pie dough right to the bottom of that. We wanna roll this out till it's about an eight inch thick. Roll it out using a rolling pin. And then a little trick to be able to move that pie crust dough, simply fold it over the pin and roll it all the way back so that it's literally wrapped completely around it. Go over to a nine inch pie crust pan put it right in there, form it to it on all sides just to make sure that we've got plenty of dough here. And then using a paring knife or a small knife with about a half inch to three quarters of an inch past the edge of the pie tin, cut it all the way around it, all that excess. You can actually reuse this uh, leftover pie crust dough. It's, it's perfectly fine. I don't need it. I'm gonna discard it. Now, tuck under that little extra flap, that half inch to three quarters inch all the way around the outside. So it's sitting on that upper top layer of the pie pan. And then all you wanna do is crimp it. I just simply use two fingers on my one hand and one finger on the other and sort of push it together until it has that nice wavy crimp curl all the way around the pie crust. Boom, it's done, but it does need to chill. So hit it in the freezer for about 10 minutes or so but this is great timing because we can make our homemade whipped cream. Go ahead and head back over to that countertop and in a standing mixer with the whisk attachment, we're gonna add in some heavy whipping cream. Next, we're gonna hit it with some sugar. Last but not least, some vanilla extract. We wanna whip this on high speed. It's gonna take about two to three, maybe four minutes for stiff peaks to form. You'll see it really start to come together. Try not to eat it, it's absolutely delicious. And at this point, what we wanna do is reserve a third of it in a small bowl. So take about a cup and a half or so, set it to the side in a bowl, and then the remaining bit of heavy whipping cream, we're gonna use it to put all over the top of this pie. So transfer it to a piping bag uh, with a pointed tip. If you don't wanna do this and you're a little nervous here, that's okay. Set it to the side in a bowl and you can simply spoon it on. It's gonna taste the same. That's still gonna look gorgeous, I promise. So put the whipped cream in the refrigerator. The pie crust is nice and hard. Bring it back out from the freezer to the countertop and we need to par bake it. So the easiest way that I know how to do this is by adding a sheet of parchment paper to the top of the frozen pie crust. And then I've got some dried beans. We're gonna pour it right over top of the parchment paper, make sure none of them fall out anywhere or touch the pie crust. This is gonna help keep the pie crust down when baking it and form to the sides and no weird air pockets are going to form. So once you've completely patted it down, head over to your oven on 450 degrees. It's gonna take only eight minutes. Do not do it past that. You don't want it to brown. You don't want it to be overcooked. So once it is to that point, we're gonna simply take it out, remove the parchment and the beans. You can see the pie crust looks great. Now we need to start on some chocolate. We need to melt some semi-sweet chocolate. So simply add some to a microwave safe bowl, head over to the microwave. We're gonna put it in there for one minute. We're gonna take it out, give it a quick stir, hit it in there for 30 seconds, take it out, give it a stir, put it back, 
add it in for another 30 seconds. And then last but not least, one more stir back in the microwave for 30 more seconds. And when you take it out, you can see that it's just about all the way melted. There might be some small chunks in there, that's okay. Give it a little mix with a spoon and set it to the side. Go over to your standing mixer with the paddle attachment. Go ahead and move that pie crust off to the side. We're gonna add some softened unsalted butter to that standing mixer. We're gonna let it mix on high speed for about a minute to two minutes. Then we're gonna add in some sugar. We're gonna let that mix for four to five minutes. We want this to be light and fluffy and full of air. At this point, hit it with a little bit of vanilla extract and then go over to that chocolate. It should be more to room temperature at this point. It cools very quickly, only five to six minutes. Go ahead and pour it right into that standing mixer while it is mixing the butter and sugar together. We're gonna slowly pour that in there and you're gonna see this chocolate filling start to come to life. It's gonna start to become light and fluffy. That's exactly what you want. And at this point, we're gonna add in two eggs. We're gonna whip it for three to four minutes. Next, we're gonna finish it with two more eggs. Whip it for another three to four minutes. It's gonna look amazing. Silky smooth, light and fluffy. This is exactly what you want. Now, the most important part. Remember that third of the whipped cream you set aside? Bring that out, add that right to the bowl and fold it in. Do not mix it with the mixer. It'll, it'll whisk too hard and it can break. Like this, it will actually like break like a sauce almost. Fold it in using a spatula until all the white from the whipped cream is completely mixed in. Simply go over to that pie crust, pour it in there. It will probably come out in chunks. And then using a spoon, just sort of move it back and forth all over the top to spread it out, to flatten it out. This is the hardest part, my friends, in the refrigerator for at least two hours, but it is best overnight. Hopefully the waiting wasn't too bad, but once your pie is done, you'll notice it's definitely solidified. The butter is chilled, everything's chilled in there, so it's nice and hard. We simply finish this off with some of the whipped cream. I've got it in the piping bag, so I'm just gonna sort of pipe little rosettes all the way around on the top. It's okay if some are bigger, some are small. It kind of looks cool that way, to be completely honest with you. But cover the top completely with the whipped cream. If you're using a spoon, just hit it on there and spread it on, no big deal. And then I've got just a little bit of chocolate shavings that I just shaved with a peeler. Sprinkle it all over the top. Boom, we are done. Cannot wait to try some of this. I mean, as you can see, this looks so good. I'm dying to try this, so I'm gonna get into it. Let's not wait any longer. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like mousse. And who doesn't like chocolate mousse? It's so good. It's light, it's fluffy, it's full of flavor. That nice salt in the crust, oh my gosh, does it complement the sweetness in the filling. You're gonna love it. Thanks for watching, thanks Bob's Red Mill. Come back next week, you know I'm gonna hook something up that you are going to love.